I am at the British Museum in London, England, and in this video we're going to see the Elgin Marbles of the Parthenon in the Ancient Greece exhibit. But first, here's a statue of Crouching Venus, a Roman copy of the Greek marble. This is a statue of the god Hermes, also a Roman copy. This is the Nereid Monument, which was built in about 380 BC at Xanthos in modern day Turkey. It was a tomb and featured some classic Greek temple architecture. That's pretty neat. Charles Fellows obtained permission to basically excavate the monument and bring it back here. The monument was apparently a primary inspiration for the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. These are the actual sculptures that once graced the Nereid monument. Alright, here are the Elgin marbles. These are the marble friezes and full-size sculptures that once graced the Parthenon in Athens. They are authentic pieces of one of the most important and iconic buildings in world history. The Parthenon was built atop the Acropolis in the 5th century BC, so these sculptures were created under the supervision of the Parthenon's architect Phidias. Over the past two and a half thousand years, the Parthenon did take some damage, especially after a powder magazine blew up inside during an Ottoman Venetian War. Later on between 1801 and 1805, Lord Elgin, the British ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, took up special interest in the Parthenon. As the Ottomans still controlled Greece, Lord Elgin was able to obtain an official permit from the Ottoman Empire to remove the surviving sculptures at the Parthenon. So he removed and took all these pieces and had them shipped back to England. Now that was controversial even then. The famous poet Lord Byron wrote that what Elgin did was vandalism. Then there was a parliamentary select committee investigation into the removal of the sculptures, but it was deemed that he had appropriate permission from the governing body of the sculptures, so therefore it was perfectly legal, and they started being displayed here at the British Museum in 1817. Greece gained independence in 1832, and the Greek people were not happy that the marbles were removed from the Parthenon, and ever since there have been efforts to get these returned back to Athens. While there are a lot of contentious artifacts in this museum, like the Binion Bronzes and even the Rosetta Stone, these are probably the most controversial pieces in the museum, but I don't think they'll be giving them up anytime soon. When the Acropolis Museum was built in 2009, it was especially designed with vacant spaces to display all of these marbles if they are returned. Actually, in recent years, UNESCO has offered to mediate talks between the UK and Greece for the return of these sculptures, but the British Museum has turned them down. Then in 2021, UNESCO issued a decision that the United Kingdom should return the marbles to Greece. Should being the key word. These sculptures were part of the West Pediments. The pediment is between the triangular gable ends on a Greek temple, and they're so big at the Parthenon that they were filled with full-size sculptures. A lot of the sculptures in this pediment were damaged and destroyed by the 1674 explosion, so these were what was left. These are the Metopes, the marble panels that were originally located above the columns of the Parthenon. They all depict a centaur fighting a man, which is awesome. There were 92 of these panels, but not too many of them survived. A lot of them were actually destroyed by Christians in the 6th and 7th centuries, and a lot of them have significant parts missing. All the Metopes here are from the south side of the Parthenon, as they were the best preserved. There are 14 in here, and one ended up at the Louvre. The East Pediment depicted the miraculous birth of Athena from the head of her father Zeus. Like the West Pediment, a lot of the statues did not survive. I do like this horse head with the gaping lower jaw. That's fantastic. Here are some reclining goddesses. They may be, from left to right, Hestia, Dione, and Aphrodite. Zeus and Athena, who was born as a full-grown woman, would have been at the center. Unfortunately, they didn't survive. 
Here's a sculpture of Dionysus reclining, one of the most complete figures. And here are some more metopes that once decorated the colonnade of the Parthenon. They show more fight scenes between the Lapiths and Centaurs. The story goes that the Centaurs were invited to the wedding of the King of the Lapiths, but the Centaurs got drunk and started brawling as they tried to kidnap the women. So the Elgin marbles, controversial as they may be, are absolutely amazing. This is some of the finest surviving artwork of the mighty Parthenon. There are a couple other rooms about the Parthenon and the marbles, showing some replicas of the friezes as they actually appeared 2500 years ago. Here's a miniature model of the Parthenon. Below the Metope. There's an authentic Doric capital and drum of a column from the north side of the Parthenon. It had fallen off. Here's a map of the Acropolis, the center of Athens that was centered around the Parthenon. These are some smaller fragments from the west pediment of the Parthenon. And this is a painting of the original Elgin room that was added onto the British Museum in 1817, where they first display the marbles. In 1832, they were moved to a slightly larger space, the room that now houses the Nereid monuments. This is a marble statue of Apollo holding a cathara that was at the Temple of Apollo in Cyrene. Here's a copy of a classic Greek statue called the Spinario, or the Thorn Polar. The boy is pulling a thorn out of his foot, which he doesn't have anymore. This is a Malosian hound. These dogs were famously vicious. This was found in Rome. Here's an authentic Greek marble statue of Demeter. From about 350 BC, it was at Nidos. Here's a display of authentic artifacts from the mausoleum at Halicarnassus, which was an architectural masterpiece and one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. These are some friezes from the mausoleum at Halicarnassus, which are honestly just as impressive as friezes from the Parthenon, considering that the mausoleum no longer stands. It was the tomb of Mausolus so his name became the basis of the word mausoleum as a big tomb. The tomb was recorded as being 145 feet high, with a step pyramid roof, topped by marble sculptures of a four-horse chariot. It was truly remarkable. Sadly, earthquakes destroyed it long ago. This is a colossal statue of a Persian rider, part of a big hunting scene that was in the mausoleum quadrangle. These giant statues are from the mausoleum, the one on the right is probably Mausolus, and on his left is probably his sister wife. This is a gargantuan horse from the chariot sculpture atop the mausoleum. It was sculpted around 350 BC. And here's a lion from the mausoleum. The Elgin marbles and the remains of the mausoleum at Halicarnassus are absolutely incredible. Some of the most important relics of ancient Greece are right here at the British Museum. There's a lot more here, so take a look at my video on the rest of the museum, which showed the Rosetta Stone and other highlights. That video is linked in the description. Also take a look at my other museum tour videos. Additionally, please like the video, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.